Hello there, I'm Raj Shakti. I'm founder and managing partner of Integration Designs and head of AI for FreshRiver.ai. I'm here with Sebastian Glock. Sebastian, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sebastian Glock. I am uh, director of product marketing for Cognigy, and Cognigy is making AI agents based on conversational AI that uh, help our customers optimize operations in contact centers and provide better customer service for their end customers. Fantastic. Sebastian, tell us, who is Sebastian first? Sebastian is uh, um, an AI evangelist and AI fan. I came into this industry because I really have a deep passion for mm -hmm. technology as well as for language. And uh, I figured that you know the, the whole universe of conversational AI is uh, something to explore. So I started with Cognigy about four years ago and it has not had a single boring day. Uh, quite course. the contrary, it has been um, it has been a super exciting time, and especially the past six months have brought more change to the industry yes, and more more change to what is possible with technology indeed. than we've indeed. ever seen before. That's that is absolutely correct, right? So you said a lot of things about Cognigy, and I think it's, they are all, you're also a Gartner Quadrant leader. Yes, we are. Uh, yeah. So when you say you are uh, conversational AI and all this integration, all that, mm -hmm. can you elaborate a little bit on it? Like what is your uh, value proposition to the customer here? Our value proposition is that we bring bots to end customers that really work, that improve customer service. So in our, with our clients, it's usually not about cost saving. It is really about optimizing the experiences for the end customers. So we bring in AI agents, for example, on the phone line, that pick up the call, that ask the customer, hey, what can I do for you? And the customer can interact with them in natural language, express what they would like to do, and then they're either routed to a self-service path or they're handed over to a human agent. And that human agent is then, over the interaction, again, assisted with AI. We call this agent assist or agent augmentation. So this is what we do on a high level. If you, if you want to speak about differentiators, mm -hmm. it is also about the ability to scale. Okay. You know, the, what I just described is rather easy to build in a prototype, but making it work for, let's say, 40 million calls a year and thousands of concurrent calls at the same time as some of our customers do, then it becomes a different game. And I think this is really where Cognigy uh, has a strong side. Very well, very good. So in your, um, the product line, how is your integration with uh, the back-end systems and the other third-party systems around there? Yeah. So as a platform, we really want to be agnostic towards our clients' ecosystems uh, because especially in the enterprise um, environment, everything is different. You know, we, there, there could be potentially thousands of systems to integrate them and some of them weren't even designed to be integrated with conversational AI. Right. So it is important for us to be open and agnostic towards those ecosystem pieces, um, but still opinionated. Uh, and that is why we have a mix of open APIs to integrate basically anything that needs to be integrated, okay. as well as free integrations or turnkey integrations into existing systems. Right? Okay. So some of the tools that many companies have, you can just mm -hmm. kind of drag and drop them on the screen in the product, right. you enter an API key and it's going to work. So it's going to talk to your Salesforce, for example. It's okay. going to talk to your, to your CMS system or to, to other kind of uh, widely distributed systems that always play a role in enterprise ecosystems. That's fantastic. So, how has your roadmap changed with mm. the rapid rise of LLM in the last eight months? Oh, wow, that is, uh, that's a good question. And I can tell you the roadmap has changed a lot. Yes. Um, we were, um, I think when ChatGPT came out, everybody was, you know, kind of in... in, in a, yeah, I mean, everybody was excited about this. And there was a lot of discussion, not just with Cognigy, but in the entire industry. What does that mean? Is this the end of conversational AI? You know, is ChatGPT going to replace all the customer service APIs and, and AIs? And it quickly turns, turned out that, you know, that's not going to happen. It has, it, it's a wonderful, it's an amazing product. I use it every day as a product marketer, um, but it has its limitations. So we were rather early in the game to kind of build a hybrid between okay. the old world of conversational AI and the new world of LLMs. And by bringing these two worlds together, we really create a best of both that keeps what we have, what's working well, and it enriches it with the new possibilities of LLMs. And um, that allows us, for example, to have much more natural dialogues, to build bots faster than ever before, to also include new capabilities that didn't exist a year ago, right? But at the same time, 
there are some applications where LLMs are not super strong. You know, an example are highly structured processes. You know, let's say you want to rebook your flight. Sure, you want to do that with an LLM that tends to hallucinate, that doesn't always follow the instructions, right? Maybe not. You know, and for that, we can, as I said, combine LLMs with traditional bot building, so like a rule-based bot Workflow building. Workflow automation. Workflow yeah. automation, exactly. And uh, that creates, uh, at the end, the optimal user experience. Okay. Uh, let me ask you one drill down question on that. And so, in your product line, are you providing integration to LLM of cl customer's choice, mm -hmm. or are you using LLM in your product line itself for, for doing some of your workflow, some of the intent recognition and all that? Yeah, well, here we are again opinionated but open. So we have a set of pre kind of pre integrated models mm -hmm. that we kind of handle in a piece that we call LLM orchestration. Okay. And the key here is that we give the customer the choice to mix and match the LLMs that works best for a specific capability that they need in their implementations, right? So maybe one model is really good at creating summaries. Another model could be really good at creating embeddings. Right. And all these models come with different trade-offs. And those trade-offs are about price, they are about latency, they are sometimes about privacy. Mm -hmm. So it is really key for us to, to build this orchestration piece and mm -hmm. leave our customers with the flexibility to mix and match, but we don't let them alone with it, right? Okay. And, uh, this is, uh, this is something that makes it easier for our customers to get to production fast with that uh, new technology. Understood, so this is from a customer perspective, right? Exactly. In, from Cognigee's perspective, yeah. you had the conversational AI typically has intent recognition and all yeah. these kind of modules. Yeah. Are you using or planning to use these generalist LLMs yeah. to do that? That's a brilliant question. We're going really deep here, so I appreciate that. Um, and th the answer is very straightforward you only get the best results if you combine LLMs with the classical methodologies of NLU, intent recognition, slot detection, and so on. I'll give you a very simple example. If you ask an LLM, um, is your shop open tomorrow? The LLM doesn't know what tomorrow is. It doesn't even know what today is. It has no idea. Traditional conversation AI easily gets that. You know, there's a slot detection, it finds the word tomorrow, it can process it into a date right. object, right? And then it can do a lookup. What's or, today's date? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and uh, we have applications where we use the, the kind of the old school NLU piece as the first layer okay. for processing a request. Then we enrich it with metadata, for example, like mm -hmm. a date, and then we pr process it downstream with an LLM. And the combination of these is really what creates something that is bigger than each of these pieces. So the answer is we need both to be successful in okay. projects. All right, it's a brilliant answer. So you mentioned scalability as yeah. one of the differentiators. Yeah. Right. So how did you achieve that? I, well, I think the, the answer really lies in the, in the underlying architecture. So the, the centerpiece of the software that, is, that was designed to be cloud native and scalable from the right. very beginning of kind of, from the origins the of cognitive, of this, right? Yeah. From the conception. Um, so it was designed to work on premises as well as in the cloud. Um, and we can use the same mechanisms Kubernetes based on, in, you know, on mm -hmm. in both of these mm -hmm. environments. Um, and uh, it is, it, it's not an easy task because there are many, many, many layers and components. Everybody would have done it, right? Everybody would have done it, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, we are dealing with a lot of customers who, right. for example, have intense peak loads. You know, one example is the travel industry. We have bots that do flight of rebooking. Mm -hmm. And now what happens when you have a severe weather incident yes. somewhere, that can affect 10,000 travelers Multiple in a matter of a few hours, right? right? And you, you cannot, it's impossible to scale up a, a contact center with human agents right. in, in minutes or in hours. Right. So people turn to technology to do that. Mm -hmm. But even that isn't super easy. Right? Mm -hmm. when, when, the, when the load increases tenfold, hundredfold, you need machinery and architecture that supports that. And I think Cognigy is really able to deliver what we promise here. So, so the key point is uh, the long-term design was how you started with the initial architecture yes. and that enabled the scalability. Absolutely. Answer. Yeah. As you as you modify, evolve over period. Yeah, and we had a smart CTO and two smart founders who <laughs> who, who got that fixed very early on. Of so, course, uh, of yeah. course, some experienced <laughs> ones. Right? Exactly. Um, what are what ha challenges have you faced when with a sp any specific customer? It doesn't matter. Right? 
Yeah. One of the challenges is that challenges are like crucibles. It helps you grow, get stronger, evolve, right? Yeah. What challenges sticks in your mind that you want to talk about? Um, well, some of the challenges around integrations are not so much in the technical integration of, you know, making an API call and getting something back. It is really of the business process behind it. Get the approvals, get the buy-in from internal stakeholders, get the signature, you know, right. under a piece of paper that says CogniG can talk to this API, right? Six, yeah. And this is sometimes what really makes projects take longer than necessary. But it's understandable because data is critical. You know, you cannot expose your APIs to anyone and anything. So it needs to be well thought through. But many of these obstacles are kind of in this kind of business management realm and not so much technical, right? Um, there can sometimes also be a, a buy-in and alignment problem within organizations because the way we see conversational AI is not a point solution, right? So we're not going to an enterprise and say, hey, we're going to put this extra bot on your website and then you're fine. But we, we take it as a, for us, it's a holistic CX exercise. And now think about how many stakeholders you need right. on board to really transform CX in the company. It's not enough to only talk to the content center people. It's not enough to talk to the website people. You need everybody in one room. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is often a challenge for customers to make their projects really, really, really big. That's a brilliant answer. Thank you. So I, I think that is something that everybody faces. Yeah. So have you redefined your initial engagement or the prerequisite definition to prep the customer for this? <laughs> um, yes. I think so. Uh, one, one aspect that is changing in the industry is that we feel that sometimes organizations are almost overwhelmed when you, when you give them a big platform pitch, when you're too agnostic and too open about the art of the possible of the platform. Right? Too many choices. Too many choices. You know, yes. Anything could be done and uh, so people get kind of lost in opportunities and in decisions. I think what we have changed over the years is our approach to be much more ROI focused mm -hmm. and be, be laser focused on initial use cases. And our ideal interplay with the customer is that we identify a use case that has a clear ROI, you know, that is smartly defined and achievable in a, in a short amount of time. And when we can demonstrate ROI from that use case, we can use the ROI to pay for the next, pay for the next, pay for to the next. establish credibility. Exactly. There are diminishing returns over time, which is absolutely fine, but that is the only way how you can kind of really get a project going with initial results, but then not stop there, but you know, iteratively add up to the automation. Build on your you know, Build and go yeah. higher and higher and higher in automation and service quality. So Fantastic. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Fantastic, all right. Great answer. Uh, last question is, okay. with the open source LLM mm. getting stronger okay. every day. Yeah. There's very competitive offers right now, Llama 2 and all these, um, Platypus, Stable, AI, Stable mm. AI has released their free Willy model, which mm -hmm. is almost as good as ChatGPT 4 in yeah. some of the Elm evaluation and all that, right? Yeah. With those in mind, how do you see your roadmap changing? So we want to be, again, agnostic towards the open source LLMs. Um, I, I do think that they will have a very bright future. Mm -hmm. um, and it's constantly evolving, constantly changing, right? So today, GPT-4 wins next week. Maybe somebody yes. else wins, right? And so the answer about the roadmap is we're going to remain very, very agile. The one caveat about the open source LLMs is that open source doesn't mean they're free. You know, yes. somebody still has to pay for the hardware, and somebody yes. has to, Hosting. you know, to host them and pay the energy bills, right? Order. Yes. So um, it is not necessarily the case that we think uh, open source LLMs will make everything better and cheaper and more accessible. We think they're a, a solid alternative to what mm -hmm. we have today. But they will not overnight replace, you know, the open right. AIs and the Azure's of the world. So we want to be agnostic. We of want course. to keep it agile. Um, but as soon as there's the, an open source LLM that works for our customers and provides the experience that we want to provide, then hey, you know, be our guest. We're going to have it integrated tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Great conversation, Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me.